Okay, Coach, first talk about the big victory last week. It was good to get in the win column. Sure is. You know, we had a tough start to the season, so uh, getting that first win always feels good. But it's also a good confidence builder moving forward. Talk about the, uh, the rushing effort by your team, uh, not seen in Holy Cross history since uh, 1983. Yeah, it was, uh, it's always nice to be able to rush the ball. If you can do that, you know, as a coach, that's uh, always going to be your first, first choice. Even with some of the good passing teams we've had over the years, you know, it was something that we always aspired to do. We couldn't do it as well as we wanted to at times. So, you know, we just found out uh, fairly early in the game that we were, you know, we, we were running the ball well. We were blocking very well up front. Um, our receivers were doing a good job on the perimeter. So we mixed it up with the inside and outside type runs. We're running some option uh, to loosen them up and then jamming up some uh, inside zone and, and, uh, and counter plays inside. It really seemed to uh, be working quite well, and we stuck with it. Now, and you just touched upon it, something that you guys have tried to, you know, aspire to be a, a better rushing team over the, over the years of your tenure here, over 400 yards rushing. So does that change the mindset, or is it still a game-by-game -game, uh, principle here? I think it changes the mindset. It gives us, uh, the coaches and the players, a lot more confidence that we can actually do that. Um, you know, Central Connecticut was one of the smaller defensive fronts that we'll face. However, they were also packing the box with their secondary, so they challenged us with numbers that way. Um, and I think we did a good job. But, you know, we, we know we're going to have to improve in some areas if we want to do that consistently. Um, but I think it will give us some confidence that we can do that moving forward. All right, how about your mindset overall as you return home at one and two as opposed to only three? A uh, huge difference. Uh, you know, it's like I said, a much needed win, a confidence builder, um, and something that just changes the atmosphere around the program. You know, the the doom and gloom is is gone, and um, you know some of that uh, some of that joy you have playing the game of football is back. Uh, it's not just the, the daily grind. Um, now, you know, it's a little bit extra motivation. All right, let's go defensively a little bit. You give it 21 points, but had a lot of solid play, including a rookie, Kyle Young. Yeah, Kyle had an outstanding game in his first start. Um, we had the uh, George Sessions go down last week and with an injury, and Kyle stepped in and did a really good, nice job. He's still got some things to improve upon as well, too, but um, you know, I think it was a great start for him. He was Patriot League Rookie of the Week. Um, he had 10 tackles in his per first performance. I'm not sure many people can say they could do that. Okay, this week we turn the tide. You got uh, Monmouth coming in. What, what can we expect from them? Uh, they're uh, similar to uh, to uh, some of the NEC teams that we've played. I think they're a bigger, more physical team than Central Connecticut, but they also have some good skill. Uh, I don't think they uh, the running backs are very good, but um, a little bit different type of runners than uh, we just faced in Holloman from Central Connecticut, who I think may be one of the best running backs we'll see all year. Um, but uh, they're, they're solid all the way around on offense, defense, special teams. They're a very well-coached team, um, and uh, they like to run the ball, and they like to try to stop the run. So, you know, they're, they're a like-minded, uh, they're in a like mindset than we are right now. Okay, and of course this year, again, once again under the lights for the third time, third consecutive year. And this one happens to be on a Saturday night, which could be kind of special. And so just tell us what it's been like to play under the lights the previous two years, and, and what you're looking for this year? Uh, it's always a, a more electric atmosphere under the lights, as you know, and uh, I think uh, there's uh, your chance of uh, better attendance increases with all the different things that are going on during the day. We're doing a six o'clock start for young families, you know, so it doesn't get too late for them. But I think it's plenty late enough for uh, for most of the Saturday afternoon activities to be over. So I think it'll be a big crowd. Um, just playing under the lights just says that. Uh, that, that atmosphere, that electric feel to it. And the last two games that we've done that, you know, have been, you know, great games and uh, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. And, uh, you know, doing on a Saturday this time, I think will provide even bigger, uh, a bigger opportunity for a bigger crowd. Okay, and of course, one other aspect of the, of the, the some other uh, Crusader legends being added to the Ring of Honor, and just talk about how special that is for them, and, and also for the school to recognize what they did for the program. I think it's a real special night. Um, you know, you're bringing back some Crusader legends that, you know, names that people you know know um, from the past and you know very successful alumni. Um, you know, their families and friends and teammates and classmates will all be back, and I think uh, a lot of the Worcester community knows some of those names. And uh, you know, it's a real special honor for them. So um, I think there's a big draw for that as well. Okay, and finally, let's just uh, talk about a little bit about health update. Where do we stand at the quarterback position? the health of all your quarterbacks there. 
uh, quarterback finally um, has uh, really come back. Um, uh, Stephen Elder is, is full go now. Ryan Lachlan is as healthy as he's been all year, so um, that's a nice situation to have. Um, both were hampered with injuries early in the season, so I think we'll be as healthy at the quarterback position as we've been all year. Um, in the running back uh, position, we have Reggie Woods back, who was injured early in the year, uh, but we may be without the services of Gabe Deal for a week. Um, we'll have to see how he feels, but uh, not a long-term injury, but uh, he was injured in the first half against Central Connecticut last week. Okay, and just touch upon a little bit about your freshman play that we kind of highlighted a little bit in the preseason, you know, whether it be Gild, who's out a little bit nicked up now, or, or Nicolazen over at the tight end spot, or, you know, any of those freshmen that you feel have kind of impressed, and have you seen the obvious growing pains that you would have, ex you know, expected out of, out of a freshman player? Well, Gild seemed to uh, have hit the, hit the ground running. Um, I think uh, it's partly the nature of the position running back. Um, he also has great hands. I, I think his skill set is, is just right for what we do. Um, so um, you didn't notice it as much with him. Um, but uh, Nick Lason at tight end has really progressed in the last three weeks. He by far had his best game on Saturday. And I see some great things coming out of him. You know, we mentioned Kyle Young earlier. I think it's really hard to get in there and do uh, what he did, you know, um, you know, uh, especially for a guy that was a quarterback in high school. Um, so it's a completely new position, but his athletic ability, sh uh, you know, showed through. And uh, we've had probably another four or five guys play in games in different capacities on special teams. We're getting in offense and defensive plays, so uh, it's pretty neat having some young guys and that, you know, young guy <laughs> get on the field and uh, contribute to the success of the team.